good. Romans 3, 21 through 26, if you'll find that and have that passage ready, we'll be sharing it together in just a moment. As you're finding the passage, just want to share with you a couple of events in the life of our church that uh, I want you to be aware of and something that we can continue to celebrate together as well. One is how the Lord is adding to our number. Last Sunday at the end of our nine o'clock worship service, uh, Mark and Felicia Williamson came uh, to join the church family and so so we welcome them. That official vote always happens uh, in a business meeting uh, a little bit later, but they've come forward for membership. Mark and Felicia Williamson, and we do welcome them. Also, just to keep in mind, some great events happening for the Christmas season here at Campbellsville Baptist. You've already begun to hear about Christmas in Kentucky, which will take place two performances today, a performance at 3 o'clock and also a performance at 6 o'clock, and this will be a great ministry of our adult choir and orchestra to offer this to our community, to our church families, a great way to continue to celebrate Christmas together. Christmas in Kentucky. Invite friends, invite family. Performance at three and at six o'clock today. And then also something else that I don't want you to miss. On Wednesday night, December the 14th, this coming Wednesday night, we're going to gather together as a church and we're going to go Christmas caroling. And in particular, we're going to give a fresh touch and connection to members of our church who are homebound or in the nursing home. These are folks, many of which, many of whom, dedicated members, they would be here otherwise, uh, but they're just not able to physically. And so we want to continue to show them the love of Christ and keep them connected to our church body. One of the ways to do that is to take some Christmas caroling to them. So we'll do that this coming Wednesday. So come and be a part of this. It'll start at 515 in our fellowship hall. We'll provide a snack meal free of charge for all those who are going to do this with us. And then as that meal concludes, we'll organize into some groups. We'll go out and we'll Christmas carol. The, the plan is, is to be back at the church and everything concluded by 7 o'clock. Uh, what I would love to see is all age groups involved in this together. Everyone from our children and, and youth all the way up through young adults, young families, and even into senior adults as well. So be a part of this this coming Wednesday, December the 14th, beginning at 5.15. Now, taking your Bibles, Romans 3, 21 through 26, asking you to follow along as I read aloud. Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 26. Would you please stand in honor of God's word and follow along as I read. Romans 3, beginning at verse 21. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. I want to begin a series of sermons with you for these months remaining in December that I'm simply calling Symbols of the Season, and, and simply um, acknowledging and giving God thanks for all of the symbols, all of the traditions, all of the pictures and images that Christmas always brings with it. The symbols of the season, everything from ornaments and decorated trees to the, 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 uh, the um, uh, sounds of the Christmas carols that we love so much, all the way to, to party gatherings and, and, and everything that we enjoy and celebrate together. The symbols of the season, not only are they a blessing for us, but also I believe God uses even the symbols of Christmas to speak to us, to speak to God's people, to speak to the entire world. In other words, to say once again that God loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When is it 
that you would ever find yourself in a different season of the year in a shopping mall or a drugstore or a grocery store, and over the loudspeaker, you hear songs about Jesus. When else does that happen but this time of year? And I believe it's God's way of saying, I'm here, I love you, and I've given my son for you. The symbols of the season. But I want this also to be a help and encouragement for all of us as well. We all realize and understand how busy and hectic the Christmas season can be. And if we're not careful, we'll get so caught up in the activity of it that we, that we will miss the very symbols that God is using to speak to our hearts as well. So what I want to do over these, the, the, just these few weeks before Christmas is to just take one symbol, one picture, one tradition that we all know so well and to simply say, God, what are you showing us through that symbol? And this morning, I want to start with the symbol of gifts. Christmas and gifts. Gifts and Christmas, they all go together. In fact, apart from celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself, we would say, well, the reason we have Christmas is to exchange gifts, to share gifts, and to receive gifts. The two go together, Christmas and gifts. I'll be honest with you. My challenge, my challenge every year in Christmas giving is not to procrastinate. That's my big challenge. And I would venture to say uh, uh, many people in the room this morning could, could relate to that. Just to not procrastinate. Don't leave it to the last minute. And I found that the sooner I start my Christmas shopping, the better it is. I've got time to shop for that perfect gift, or if I don't find it in one store, time to go somewhere else instead of saying, well, if they're out of it, I'll, I'll just find something else. The more time I have, and admit this, the more time you have, the better it is, even to look for that, that, that very perfect gift. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed with Sarah in so many ways. Understand that, that Sarah does the bulk of the Christmas shopping. But I get to shop for Sarah. And, and Sarah will share with me ideas. And then I'll have things that, that I just want to give to Sarah, just, just out of my own heart, just things that I would like for her to have. But that's the joy of giving at Christmas time, just the gifts. And I've been watching our tree. And I've been watching the bottom of our tree. And as each day passes, a few more wrapped gifts find their way under that tree. Knowing that by the 23rd of December, the 24th, the 25th, the bottom of that tree will be so jam-packed with gifts, all wrapped up and ready to be opened. But I want to tell you something. Every time you see a gift at Christmas, there's something that God wants you to know. Every time you see a gift, God is telling you something. It's a little bit like uh, that uh, that scene from that great Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Remember in that movie? Every time you hear a bell ring, you're supposed to remember that an angel gets its wings, right? Well, every time you see a gift at Christmas, and it's going to be a lot, I want you to remember some things about God and you. The symbol of the season, what does God want us to know, even through the simple symbol of a gift? Well, here it is. God gives us the best gift of all. And every time you see a gift, every time you give a gift, every time you receive a gift, this is what I want you to remember. You receive a gift, you open it, you unwrap it, you take the bow off, you open the box, you're blessed with how someone has loved you to give you something, but at that very moment, I want you to remember, you know what, as awesome as this gift is, God's given me the best gift of all. And what is indeed that best gift of all? Well, you can't fit it in a box. You can't fit it under a tree. The best gift of all we find explained right here in Romans 3, 21 through 26. When I read the passage a moment ago, some of you might have thought, well, Pastor Mike, I'm expecting uh, 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 angels announcing to the shepherds or the wise men visiting the manger. Why do you have this passage here from Romans 3, 21 through 26? Because it's here that we learn about the best gift of all. And look at what it is. Again, look at your Bibles. Romans 3, 
Verse 21, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. There's no distinction for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Verse 24, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. What's the gift? What's the best gift of all that God has given you? The Bible calls it righteousness. The Bible calls it justification. What do those Bible words mean? They mean simply this. God gives us the best gift, and that gift is a right relationship with him. It's the gift of relationship. But even more than that, the gift of a right relationship with the God who created you, the God who redeemed you, and the God to whom you will one day give an account of your life. He is the one. And he's given you a right relationship with him. It's righteousness. Now, whenever the Bible talks about this, righteousness, justification, it simply means this, that you and I are born into a state or a condition where we are not right with God. Things just aren't right. And, and, and in fact, there can be that time when we sense that gnawing sense, you know, things just aren't right. I don't feel like I am at peace with God. I don't feel like I'm right with God. Listen, if that's the case, you know it. You sense it, you feel it, you experience it. And imagine God saying to you, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you a right relationship with me to where you know it, you sense it, you feel it, and you can say beyond a shadow of a doubt, and I can, I can say to you this morning, I am not a perfect person. I fail God in so many ways, I stumble in so many ways, but there is no doubt in my mind, and there can be no doubt in your mind as well, that you are right with God. That's the gift of a right relationship. And Paul tells us in Romans 3, this is, what God, this is the gift of God to you. Now, let me show you some things about this gift of right relationship that fully satisfy all the requirements of the best gift of all. Work with me on this. First of all, the best gift is one that we want, right? Now you think about this. The best gifts are the ones that you already want. Maybe you've seen something or you've heard about something or, or maybe your friends have something and you're thinking, you know, I would really enjoy that too. This is something that, that, that I simply want. The best gifts are ones that you want. I remember as a child, this is where you most fully see this and experience it. Remember one year, the one gift that I wanted was a new bicycle. And it wasn't just any bicycle. It was a bicycle that had one of those uh, banana seats, right? And remember when, when the bikes used to have those handlebars that would like loop up and around? Remember those? Some of you don't. Well, it's still, I'm telling you, they used to make them that way. Banana seats, big, handlebars looping up. And that was something that I, I was like, I was like eight years old, and man, I thought, man, I, I would love to have a bike like that. Some of my buddies already had one. And th th this was a cool bike. Th this, was, this was like a Brady Bunch bike. I mean, it was, it was just so cool. I, I thought, yeah, I would just love to have one of those. And so just, just like the kid in the movie who wants the BB gun, you know, I just dropped the hints along the way. Leave the pictures around for people to see. But lo and behold, Christmas morning, I wake up, and there beside the tree is that bike with the banana seat and the crazy handlebars, and had a big old bow on it. And that was a gift that I wanted. And it gave me a lot of joy, and I rode that bike for years. The, the worst accident I ever had on a bike was on that bike, by the way. But I still rode it, loved it, had so much fun on that bike. But that was a gift that I, that I wanted. Listen, the gift of right relationship with God, isn't this truly what all of us are searching for? Isn't this what all of us are, are wanting and yearning for? And maybe we don't even fully realize this yearning of our hearts, but it just explains why we do what we do. How often do we think that, that something else will satisfy that need? Why do we pine for or long for that job promotion? Well, if I only have the job promotion, then everything would be fine. Or if I had that shiny new toy or that fancy new car or that, that shiny new gadget, if I only had that, then everything in my life would just work out fine. 
Maybe it even goes to the point of wanting a new relationship or a new partner in life. If I only had that, if that person were only in my life, then everything would work out just great. What are we searching for? We're searching for God and being right with him. It's about peace. It's about lasting and abiding joy. It's about knowing that life may not always work out perfectly according to our plan, and yet we always have the affirmation and the assurance that God is with us no matter what. This is really what we want. And it's exactly what God gives you. It's the best gift because it's what we want. But you know what? It's also what we need. You know the difference? You know, sometimes you get a gift that you want, And sometimes you get a gift that you need. And sometimes they aren't the same, are they? I remember this, again, as a kid growing up. I don't think it was the same Christmas that I got the bike with the banana seat. But I do remember one Christmas when my dad got my mom a gift that he felt like she needed, but it wasn't necessarily what she wanted. And I will never forget this. Under the tree, box, wrapped beautifully with the bow on it, we're opening gifts. And, and my dad gives it to my mom. And, and you can tell he's just looking forward to her unwrapping it. And mom kind of looks at dad and he looks at her and she says, oh, this is going to be awesome. So she unwraps the box, takes the bow off, takes the wrapper off, and sees what the box is. And it's a box holding a brand new blender, okay? And mom was disappointed. And dad was disappointed because he felt like that would really be a great gift for her because he knew that was something that she needed because she, I need a new blender. All right, here's a blender. But it wasn't necessarily what she really wanted. Do you see the difference? The best gifts are the ones that we not only want, but we also need. The gift of a right relationship with God is not only what satisfies the deepest longings of our soul, but it's also exactly what you and I need. Imagine what it's like to have that assurance, to have that confidence, to know that God will never leave you or forsake you, to know that on that day that you stand before the Lord to give an account of your life, imagine what it would be like to face that day with full assurance and full confidence, all because of what someone else has already done for you. Imagine to stand before the Lord and to say, Lord, I have nothing. I have nothing to offer you. My life is a mess, but I have Jesus. And because of Jesus, I'm going to claim his perfection and his righteousness. Imagine what that is like. Imagine that assurance and that certainty because at the end of the day, it's not based upon what you and I do or don't do. It's all based on the perfect work of our Savior. That assurance and that certainty. It means heaven no matter what. You think you're going to go to heaven one day? Well, I just don't know. I I just hope it works out. I, I sure hope I get there. No, no, no. You're either going or you're not. And if you've trusted Jesus, you're going to go. You know it. See, that's what we need. It's the gift of this right relationship with God. It's what we want. It's what we need. Let me show you something else about the gift that just makes it the best one ever. This truly is a priceless gift. Again, I think about the gifts that I have received, that, that, that because they are an expression of love and, 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 and deep affection, the best gifts that we've received are ones that are just priceless. We, we could not put a value on them. Oh, maybe, maybe someone might, might say, well, you know, Mike, that, get that bike you got back in the 70s with the banana seat and the handlebars, if you were to sell that on eBay today, you could get X amount of dollars on it. No, that's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about the memory of my parents giving me that bike only because I said, you know what, I would love to have that kind of bike. Therefore, that gift is priceless. You can't put a price on it. And if I still had that bike today, you could not pry it away from me. I would hold on. Now, again, if the Lord said get rid of it, I would get rid of it. Please don't misunderstand me. But barring anything else, you know, sell it, make some money off it. No, 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 it's priceless. I wouldn't want to part from it. Those are the best gifts, the ones that are priceless, because of what they show us, what they represent. Listen, what about this gift you've got in Jesus Christ? 
You could not put a value on it. In fact, the Bible says we are saved by grace, not we, we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, so that no one can boast. It is a priceless gift that we have received. But oh, the cost, the cost that God the Father endured to give it to us. Look at what the Bible says, Romans 3. He says, verse 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but were justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 25. Whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. It's a gift that's priceless, but oh, what a cost. Oh, what a cost to give it to us. In fact, the Bible tells us that God gave. God is the one who has given. God is the one who has sacrificed. He gave his son, his only begotten son, so that Jesus Christ himself could be our sacrifice. Jesus Christ himself could give his life on the cross at the expense of our sins. The Bible says that he died in our place. The, the, the stripes that gave him healing, the bruising that have brought, uh, the wounds that have brought us forgiveness have been unleashed upon him, but because of his wounds, his brokenness, his shed blood, we are forgiven. What a cost, a priceless gift that you and I have been given. You can't put a value on it. You can't even try. But again, because of the love and the grace and the forgiveness that this gift represents, it truly is life-changing. It's a priceless gift. What else can we say about it? Why is it the best gift of all? Because it is free for you and I. Even though it cost God his own dear son, you and I receive it completely free of any work or any merit. The Bible says that if we believe in Jesus, if we trust in Jesus, if we turn to Jesus, and if we believe in our heart that God has sent him, we confess with our mouth that he is the Lord, we will be saved. It's free gift. Imagine if it wasn't free. Imagine if it was one of those quote-unquote gifts, right? I say quote-unquote gifts because sometimes we receive things that have strings attached. Or we receive a gift that's not really a gift. Or, or maybe we, we've, we've accomplished something in, in, in our place of employment or we've, we've achieved something, some sort of a milestone. And again, that, that is all to celebrate. But if we receive something because of that, that's not really a gift in the strict sense of the word. Or if we receive a gift and all of a sudden we're thinking now, if I got something from him, then I need to think about what I'm going to give them back in return. All of a sudden there are strings attached and we're worried about how to return it, how to receive it, how to give back. Strings attached. Imagine a gift that's just truly free that you get to receive with no string attached at all. This is the gift of this right relationship with God. You receive it. You trust Jesus. He comes into your heart. Now listen, this is when the transformation begins. This is when you begin to walk with the Lord. You begin to obey him, not because you have to, but because you want to. And the surest evidence that indeed this new life is real in you is because you do have a change in your life. You are concerned about walking obediently before the Lord, but not to earn your salvation, but because you already have it. But it's a free gift that you receive from the Lord. And then what about this? It's the best gift of all because it's here. Imagine a gift that you've been hearing about, that people talk about, that gives, so I'm gonna give this to you, man, I can't wait to give it to you, but you gotta wait. I'm gonna give you the most amazing gift on December the 25th, but you have to wait to receive it. Imagine a gift that is so awesome and so amazing and it's here right now. That's the gift of a right relationship with the Lord. You don't have to wait. You don't have to sign up for a class. You don't have to go through a training course. No, the Bible says now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. You don't have to wait. In fact, the Lord through his Holy Spirit says, by all means, don't wait. 
because you have no idea what could happen before the end of this day. Why would you wait? And you don't have to wait. What does the Apostle Paul say? He says in verse 26, it was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might not only be just, but also the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Realize the beauty of this is that God's perfect holiness and God's perfect standard is totally and completely vouchsafed. God does not compromise in the least. He is still just, but he also happens at the very same time to be the justifier. He makes you just. He makes you right. But he gives it to you. Gifts. Think about the first gifts of Christmas. We think about those wise men who came from the east to find the, the birth of the Savior. When they found him, what do they do? They present him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, and if, you, if you stop and think about it, to give those types of gifts, those were the types of gifts that you would give to a world global dignitary. Those were like gifts from one and one government to another. Why would you give those to a baby who is so poor that his parents have to have him laying in a, in a feeding trough? Why would, you, why would you do that? It was the Magi saying, he's our king. He's our savior. He's the promised one. We give him gold fit for a king. We give him, we give him um, frankincense that, that is known through the world as a healing agent. We give him myrrh because it's used to anoint a, a body for burial. We give all these things to simply say to this baby in a manger, he is our king who will give his life so that we can be right with God. There's no way you can give God back all that he has given for you. You can't match him dollar for dollar. You can't even try. So what does he say to you and me? He says, receive the gift. Just receive it into your heart by faith and let the life change begin. Every time you see a gift this Christmas, and I know you're going to see them a lot and all the time, but every time you see a gift, I want you to remember God has given you already the best gift of all. Father, we thank you this morning for Jesus Christ, the best gift of all, and all that we have in him and the right relationship with, that we have in Jesus. And Lord, I pray that this morning, this morning as your Holy Spirit continues to stir in our midst, that indeed, Lord, the people would come today and by simple trust in the Lord, receive the gift that is waiting for them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.